consideration that went into choosing fragrances for this list, it seems like I'm going from what was the easiest to select to the hardest. And I will tell you that I did save the hardest selection for last. And we're going to get into it, so don't click off the video because that particular house was really hard, really hard for me to choose. And my reasoning and how I actually narrowed it down to the final one, you, you might want to uh, listen to. But anyway... What's up, YouTube? My name is Darren. I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. On this channel, we talk about fragrances, we talk about fashion, we talk about lifestyle as well. So, if any of those things sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing to this channel and also make sure you don't forget, hit that little bell icon as well. That way, when I upload new content, YouTube will notify you. I mean, there's a small chance they will notify you. So, I don't know. If you don't see a video from me in like three days, just go search my name and then you'll see the video because I don't know, notifications don't work sometimes. But it gives us a better shot. So guys, on today's video, I'm gonna be doing something where I'm gonna look at 10 of the most popular designer fragrance houses and I'm gonna give you guys my top selection from each said fragrance house. Now I've always often said that when you talk about uh, subscribers and subscribing to a certain fragrance reviewers channel it can be done for several different reasons you might like their personality you might like their style you might their, like their presentation but ultimately with all those reasons taken into consideration oftentimes it comes down to the fact that you like their taste in fragrances and then you start to go down what could really of course considered to be a rabbit hole uh, somewhat of collecting fragrances is like this house, that house, the new, this new release, that new release. I don't know what I need to uh, to purchase or you know invest in, and that's where a video like this I think will come in handy. With so many different fragrance houses, with so many new releases being released on a weekly basis, sometimes again it's kind of hard to kind of figure out what's the best of the best. And if that sounds like you, this video is going to be really really helpful. I've taken the top ten most popular in my opinion, uh, designer fragrance houses, and I've chosen my favorite from each house. So if one of the reasons you chose to follow this channel is you like my taste in fragrances, then this video is probably going to be really, really helpful. So I'm going to stop talking. We're going to get into it. Coming up, top 10 fragrances from the top 10 popular designer fragrance houses. If you want to see what made the list, you know how we rock. Keep it locked right here. See, that rhymes. Alright guys, we're back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in. Let's go ahead and jump right into this video. So the first fragrance house that I want to talk about is the House of Gucci. Now, I will tell you this. Some of these fragrance houses, when I went to make this selection, it was really, really easy. And some of them, it was really hard. You know, it's kind of this thing where uh, you feel like you're uh, treating some of your fragrances. It's kind of like a stepchild to some degree when you don't choose them <laughs> when you're doing a list like this. But there could only be one winner in each fragrance house. This was one of the fragrance houses that was really, really easy for me. And for my favorite choice, which I think is the best designer fragrance from the house of Gucci is this one right here. It's Gucci Intense Dude. And for me, this one wasn't even close. It wasn't close, it wasn't close. This fragrance right here is absolutely phenomenal. <sighs> Incense. Oud, deep, rich, resinous kind of amber accords on the base of this fragrance as well. I think there's orbitum in this as well. Amazing designer fragrance. Again, people talk about this uh, designer fragrance quality, niche fragrance quality. Eh, I could definitely say this is a well done, high quality fragrance, no matter how you look at it or categorize that. Amazing fragrance from the house of Gucci. Yes, this fragrance has been discontinued, but there's places again that you can find this fragrance. I left a link uh, maybe a week or so ago to Joma Shop. 
uh, which is where I got mine from. Um, I still have that link down below if you want to check out Gucci Intense Oud. Guys, this is an amazing designer fragrance. Definitely high quality. And for me, when you talk about the house of Gucci, this one wasn't even close. So check this out. Again, this one is called Gucci Intense Oud. All right, so the next fragrance house that I want to uh, talk about is the house of Tom Ford. Now, you have your Tom Ford private collection, and I want to say this as well. There are no private collection fragrances that have been included on this list. There's this whole thing about whether the private collection is designer, whether it's niche. At the end of the day, by a definition, from a technical standpoint, I guess they would actually be designer fragrances, but I do think that more quality ingredients, and then of course the price point on the private collections, would it make it fair to assess these with the designer selection? So that's how I view it. So if I did the niche version of this, which I will, um, then you may take those into consideration. Now, with that being said, this is coming from the fragrances that were from the quote unquote designer rated fragrances. And this is another one for me that wasn't that close. If you guys have been watching this channel for any amount of time, you probably know what this selection is. And this one is Noir Extreme. Noir Extreme, I love this fragrance. I love everything about it. It's sweet, but not overly sweet. Just the right amount of sweetness to make this fragrance really sexual and sensual. That's what this is. This is a very, very uh, date night appropriate scent. There's a, the coffee in here, there's rose, there's saffron, vanilla, sandalwood, amber on the base as well. Amazing fragrance. This is one of those fragrances for me that was love at first sniff. So it's no surprise, you know, again, for the folks that have been following my channel that I chose this as the best Tom Ford designer fragrance. Tom Ford has a lot of fragrances that I love, but this in the designer range is definitely number one. So check it out guys, again, this one's called Noir Extreme. When I think about the consideration that went into choosing fragrances for this list, it seems like I'm going from what was the easiest to select to the hardest. And I will tell you that I did save the hardest selection for last. And we're going to get into it, so don't click off the video because that particular house was really hard, really hard for me to choose. And my reasoning and how I actually narrowed it down to the final one, you, you might want to uh, listen to. But anyway, the next fragrance house up is the house of Dolce & Gabbana. Another house that uh, has some very, very great uh, offerings in the designer range of things. Uh, and But to me, this is still the best one. It goes back to this one at the end of the day just really hard to beat this DNA. And this is Dolce & Gabbana, the one or the parfum. The one or the parfum, this thing is phenomenal, man. I still say probably the best date night designer fragrance still to date on the market. Definitely one of the best. You have the orange blossom in here, you have the tobacco um, in this as well. Oh my gosh, and the amber. Those three are the three main notes that you're gonna get from this. And again, when you think about that, it's a little bit fresh, a little bit sweet, and it's sexy. Perfect for a date night. So again, if you're looking at the house of Dolce & Gabbana, I still think this is probably the best of the bunch. So check it out. If for some reason you're having it at this point, I don't know what that would be. This is the one that you would wanna purchase first in my humble opinion. And again, this is Dolce & Gabbana, the one or the pop phone. All right, guys, so the next fragrance house that I want to talk about is the House of Prada. Again, Prada, not out, outside of fragrances, they have a very extensive uh, range of other things that you can purchase as well, other items, of course, in the clothing industry, one of the icons uh, in that area as well, but they do have some really good fragrances as well. So the fragrance that I chose, and this one, this was one of the ones that's starting to get a little bit difficult for me when I talk about what is the best of the best out of these particular houses. I'll talk about which fragrance was a close second to this, but let me show you, of course, what was first. And this is Prada Loam Intense. Prada Loam Intense, man, you talk about a phenomenal fragrance. The original Prada Loam, arguably in most people's opinion, one of the best office safe designer fragrances ever created. And I wouldn't argue that point, but you talk about the best. That could have been the best, but when you improve the performance of the best, then I think that fragrance has to be the best, and that's this one right here. Uh, this is one of my best performing designer fragrances in my entire collection, so 
you know, for those people out there, of course, where performance is something that's high on your list of priorities, this is definitely one you should have in your collection. Now, guys, I don't get uh, all into the news sometimes of fragrances that have been discontinued or not. I think I heard this one has been discontinued. If it is, definitely want to get your hands on a bottle of this, especially if you like the original. It still has the, that powdery iris as it opens up, but in the heart, you get amber. And that amber gives a very sweet, resinous, warm quality to this fragrance. And then on the dry down, creaminess. You get the sandalwood in here as well, tonka bean, and some leather. 10 out of 10 designer fragrance. It was, the fragrance that, to me, was a close second was uh, from the Luna Rosa line. That, I, I enjoyed that entire range of fragrances. And Prada Luna Rosa Black was really, really close. I, I went back and forth, but ultimately, this fragrance one out. So if you can guys, get your hands on this while there's still an opportunity to. This is Prada Loma Intense. All right guys, the next one up is a very, very iconic um, designer fragrance house in the fragrance world. The house of Giorgio Armani. And to me, honestly, this one wasn't really that close either, honestly. This is what I chose, Aqua Digio Profumo. Aqua Digio Profumo, this stuff is just this is phenomenal. Man, there, there is never a wrong time or a wrong place to wear this fragrance. It smells absolutely phenomenal. Now, I do understand that, just like some of the other very popular designer fragrances, that this has been talked about a lot in the whole line. But when you talk about a list like this, you can't really take that into consideration because I don't take points off of a fragrance's popularity because obviously it's popular for a reason. <sighs> So they took the best-selling designer fragrance of all time, the original Aqua Digio, and they added incense and patchouli. What does that equal? Game over. This thing is absolutely phenomenal. One of the best designer fragrances ever created in my humble opinion. This is worldwide, man, child, age range. There's no restrictions on that. There's no restrictions to seasons, reasons, or occasions that you can wear this fragrance. So get it in your life, man. This is the best from the house of Giorgio, and Ar Giorgio Armani, in my humble opinion. This one is called Aqua Digio Profumo. All right, guys. So next up on the list, another very iconic uh, designer fragrance house, and that being the house of Chanel. Once again, none of the exclusive have, exclusives have been included on this list, although they have some amazing offer offerings in that range as well. Again, we're sticking just to the designer line. Uh, the, the original designer line or range of fragrances. <sighs> one of my favorites as well. All of these are my favorites, obviously, because I chose them as number one from the entire collection. But you guys know this one very well. Blue de Chanel. Parfum. Blue de Chanel. Parfum. Guys, what an amazing fragrance. Again, anybody that would, chose, that would have chosen any of the uh, iterations of Blue de Chanel. I couldn't argue the point, man, but for me personally, the age, my age, uh, my style, personality, and the whole nine, this one just works the best for me. Again, easiest way for me to describe this when you compare this to the original, you compare it to the EDP. It kind of just amped up the woods in this one, and it works. The amber wood, the sand of wood in this, again, have been turned up. They turn the citruses down a little bit, and what do you get? You get this masterpiece right here, Blue de Chanel Parfum. Just like when I talked about with Aqua Digio Profumo, not a bad time, never a bad place, never a bad reason, never a bad season to wear this scent. And that's why it's on the list. So check it out, guys. My choice from the house of Chanel. This is Blue Chanel Parfum. All right, guys. Next up, now we're going to take a look at the house of Versace. This is another one where I went back and forth between two fragrances. The one that I ended up choosing was this right here, and it was because at the end of the day, when I put them both to my nose, being true to myself and what I like, this one just wins out. And it's this one right here, Dylan Blue. Dylan Blue, Dylan Blue. And I have been a fan ever since I put my nose on this scent. I can't remember, I purchased another fragrance and they gave me a sample of this. I smelled the sample, the next day, I went and bought a bottle of this. Again, it's just it's just my style. It's just, you know, for me again, just based on scent DNA alone, this is my favorite. I know this this one may receive some controversy or, or whatever the case may be, but honestly, I don't care. It's all about what you like at the end of the day. And 
as far as what I like in fragrances, what I like to smell on my skin, this is it right here. Uh, yeah, it can be kind of shower jelly and brocks and all that kind of stuff is in it, but this is an amazing design of fragrance. Um, it was very close between this and Versace Man Eau Fresh. You know, I've talked about that fragrance a lot. Obviously one that I really enjoy as well, especially for the summertime. But when I talk about versatility and again, just the overall scent DNA, I had to give this one a slight edge. And what really makes this fragrance to me now that I've, uh, you know, matured in my knowledge of fragrances and what I like and don't like and what certain notes do in fragrances is the fig leaf in this scent. A lot of people talk about the ambroxan, the, the tonka bean and all that kind of stuff, the, the musk, the incense. The beautiful citric opening of this fragrance, but really the fig leaf is the, uh, is the game changer in this scent. This stuff is phenomenal, man. Again, I, all the other additives that people sometimes use to associate with this fragrance, juvenile, showers, all that stuff that kind of have negative connotations, don't care. This is my choice from the house of Versace. This is my number one fragrance from Versace. All right, guys, next up, uh, we're going to talk about the house of Mugler. In 1996, the original release uh, from the Amen line, uh, 1996, uh, that fragrance spawned what we now know uh, as the gourmand genre of fragrances, or at least it popularized it with the original release from the Amen line. With that being said, there are a laundry list of fragrances that could have been chosen from the House of Mugler because there are a lot of great ones. But my favorite, this one was close as well, but my favorite is still this, Pure Vine. Pure Vine. I absolutely adore this fragrance. I have a backup bottle. But for some reason, Mugler discontinues all of the, uh, the great ones. But it was very close with this in pure malt. 1A, 1B. 10. One is a 10, one is a 9.99. I mean, it's that close. But this has that slight edge. I love that honey tobacco in this scent. When you throw in the cacao, again, just my kind of scent. And that's really what this is about when you start talking about your favorites from a particular range. Just about what you know speaks to you, what resonates with you the most. And that is this for me. So guys, before it skyrockets to, you know, what I would consider an unreasonable price, try to get your hands on this thing, man. Hopefully they bring it back one day, I don't know. But right now, while you can still get it and it's not utterly ridiculous as far as what they're asking for, go and get yourself a bottle of Pure, a pure Havon because this, again, to me, is the best that Mugler has to offer. All right, guys, so the next fragrance house that I want to talk about is the house of YSL. And uh, this was another one where it was really, really difficult, uh, really difficult to choose uh, a top fragrance from this particular range or this particular brand, but kind of like the House of Dolce & Gabbana, it kind of comes back to this particular scent, and that's Lan Louis de Lome. Lan Louis de Lome, I don't care what year, what formulation, what batch you have, to me this is the best. Now the original Lone, uh, was given some great consideration as well as YSLY, the original. I love all three of those fragrances, but for me, when I put them side by side and I put them to my nose, that my nose said this was the winner, and that's again what this is about. What does your nose tell you when you put the fragrance to your nose? What resonates with you? What speaks to you? And that's what this list is about, man. And if I had to choose one that does that the most for me, at the end of the day is this one another fragrance that to some degree has been uh, falling victim to its popularity and talk of batch variations in the whole nine but at the end of the day hard to beat this scent dna that's another rhyme i'm just good at that so if you ask your boy bowtie fragrance guy what's the best ysl fragrance in the designer range of things it's this one right here it's like we do all right guys and last but not least the house of christian dior this was the hardest uh, one for me it was hard you know I had to go sit in the corner and get myself together because <laughs> I couldn't choose two of the three that <sighs> that that were neck and neck and this is like a photo finish if this was a race this was like this controversy about who broke the tape first let's just put it that way <sighs> so I'm gonna tell you what I chose and I'm gonna tell you why I chose it my favorite 
from the house of Christian Dior. And this is probably going to surprise some of you. Dior on sport. Dior Ohm Sport, and this one is from pre-2017, before it was changed and reformulated. Now, I have seen this out there. Oh my gosh. I have seen this out there on places like eBay where you can still pick up this version of it, but this is my favorite. This is my favorite. Now, I will tell you what the other two fragrances that I went back and forth with. Of course, this one. Now, this is Dior Survives, and this is the EDP. And also, Dior Home Intense. Okay? Dior Home Intense. Now, how did I come to the ultimate decision and conclusion on this one? By far, the most complimented, most recognizable, most, uh, most bought, most talked about, Christian Dior fragrance, Dior Survives. The original, whatever iteration you talk about. Then of course you have this, that beautiful sensual lipstick iris fragrance with the beautiful, uh, sweet, kind of ambery undertones to it. Amazing fragrance. The original Dior Homme Intense. How I came to the conclusion was, I had to kind of get the best of both worlds. The freshness, of Savage, the sensuality of that iris and the aroma intense <clears throat> can be found in this bottle. I'm not saying by any means it smells like Dior Savage, but this is a fresher take to me of the aroma intense. Oh my god. This stuff, guys, I'm telling you, this stuff is magical. This stuff is magical when you take everything into consideration to me, the own sport, that's the magic. That's the magic. The magic is right here. The kind of, you know, freshness, but you still get the sensuality of the iris and the other things that you love about Dior Homme Intense. So my favorite fragrance from the house of Christian Dior is this one right here, man. Dior Homme Sport. But all right, guys, that's it. That's my time, man. I hope you enjoyed this video today as I gave you my top 10 fragrance recommendations from the top 10 most popular designer fragrance houses. As always, I sincerely appreciate your time and your attention to these videos. You guys don't have to watch, but you do, and I sincerely appreciate that. Now, don't forget to make sure you take a few moments to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you are sharing these videos out to some other folks that you think could use this information to find it entertaining. Because I'm your guy, Darren. I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. I love to look good, and of course, I love to smell absolutely amazing so until next time guys keep looking good keep smelling even better i'll catch you on the flip side